YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Carthage here, back on Total War Attila. And, uh, sorry I'm a little behind over the weekend. I had actually meant to get one of these up, but I got partway through an episode and it, the game froze. Um, so I wasn't able to actually finish it, and I had a bunch of yard work to do this last Saturday. Plus, if some of you were watching Twitter, I had a rare opportunity this last Saturday to get out to the firing range and, um, take my AR out for some fun, so... I had to take it. Um, there's a real nice firing range here in town, so I went out and did some 100-yard target shooting. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Air is definitely um, a gun noob, but I was surprised, you know, like uh, how quick you can start to pick it up, and it's just a lot of fun to do. And I know some of you are probably from countries where that's not what you like, and that's fine. I'm not sitting here selling that. And please, folks, let's not start off like a either pro-gun or anti-gun flame war. That's not what this is about. Just telling you what I was doing for the weekend and why I was busy. Um, so yeah, let's let's not get that started in the comments because it always turns into something that it shouldn't and um, It's just because people are passionate about it one way or the other and that's fine And like I said, I'm not here to talk about that I'm here to play some Attila and I'm actually excited this East Roman campaign has been a lot of fun um, Probably the most that I've enjoyed Attila so far and it's funny I saw a comment the other day because I do read through all my comments even when I'm not responding and someone was like air come on admit it You know Attila's complete dog crap and you hate it. Just say it to all of us <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. I'm I'm adding a few words to it because I don't remember the exact one. That's not true. Um, it's not. In fact, the campaign is probably one of my favorite campaigns that I've ever played, barring a few exceptions of things that still need to be fixed. And I think they will be. Uh, and but but when it comes to multiplayer, I wouldn't say that it's a pile of crap. But what I will say is that the multiplayer right now is extremely underwhelming, and it's because there's almost no variety in tactics. Cheap skirmishers, shock infantry, heavy cav. That's it. Period. Done. End of story. And two-handed axes own everything except for cavalry and the charge. And I could make a video, and I might just for fun, to show you why Attila lacks that variety right now. And it's because cavalry beats cavalry. Cavalry beats infantry. Cavalry beats spears. Cavalry beats archers. <laughs> uh, on the charge, of course. Now, if the archers just get there and shoot, there and shoot at them, then, of course, cavalry beats slingers on the charge. Cavalry beats javelins on the charge. <laughs> cavalry beats um, anything on the charge. Anything. Every time, pretty much. Now, there are a few rare exceptions. And I'm talking about heavy cavalry, by the way. Heavy cav. And because the heavy cav is so important in this game, it really doesn't lead to much cavalry variety. Like so, for instance, in Rome 2, which was not terribly well balanced, cavalry speaking, um, you still ended up with some variety between like light skirmisher cav, Sometimes people would bring some heavy shock cav, and other times you'd get uh, medium melee cav, and all of them kind of had more of a role. Now, again, the cavalry balance in Rome 2 wasn't exactly to my liking. I thought melee cav was a little weak. Um, infantry was a little too strong in Rome 2. I don't want to say a lot, um, but, but a little. You know, you, you didn't expect in that time period that cavalry just wowed up, rode up and, and mowed down heavy infantry. I, I don't want it to be that way. And maybe things changed over time to where that was possible, but... I still don't even think that the small changes by the time you get into Total War Attila would really be that way. So I just think cavalry are a little too effective. And honestly, part of the reason I think why, and I'm not counting this as episode time, so don't worry. I'm going on. If you all want, you can skip past this and just get to where I'm starting playing. I'm just having a quick discussion. Um, I think part of the reason why CA has a more challenging time balancing units in the last couple of um, games is because their unit stats are becoming increasingly complex. Now, some of you would add that this is a bad thing. Some of you argue that it's a good thing, and I'm not here to make that argument one way or the other. I can kind of see it both ways. I just think that that's what their challenge comes from. In games past, say like Shogun 2, for instance, um, there wasn't multiple hit points. Uh, the armor values were much lower. The attack values were much lower. Everything in general was much lower, and so it was easier to make small changes between units and still see a noticeable difference. Whereas when you have stats like health of 122 versus another unit that may have a health of only 80, that's a huge difference, and you're going to see it really fast. And cav units with health of like 200 and something. Now granted, that's split between man and horse, but still, that's enormous. Um, charge bonuses ranging all the way from almost nothing, all the way up to like 60 or 70 for shock infantry. Um, melee cav having charge bonuses as high as like 60 and 70 for some units as well. Um, I, I think that's the reason why it's harder for them to balance these units in. The mass differences between units is too extreme. The mass difference between a medium and a, and a heavy is enormous, and you'll notice the difference. Um, so I think that's what's causing their problem. However, I have seen rumors on the, uh, the forum, and apparently Darren 
uh, Total, the, the guy who works for Total War, used to have his YouTube channel. Um, he has apparently mentioned in a, in a Twitch stream that there's some potential uh, content coming our way, and it sounds like a DLC, but at the same time, it sounds like they plan rolling a patch with it, and the word balance is being tossed around. No one really knows what that means at this point, and they're not giving us a whole lot of information, but you can go check out the Attila forum if you want to see that. Um, if I can find it, I might put a link to it in the description, but if I can't, I apologize, it won't be there. Anyway, now I'm going to start my timer, because we're on an actual episode, so if you were getting sick of my conversation, this is the point at which you should start picking it back up. <laughs> I just have these conversations, not because I'm trying to whine about the game or anything else, which some of you have accused me of, and that's fine if that's what you think I'm doing. This is a conversation to help you understand the state of the game. This is for people who are interested in purchasing the game or who like the game and are curious about what the current state of it is. So that's why I talk about it, so that we can, you know, kind of have that for those people who are interested. Now, for those of you who just want to watch the episode, well, here you go. So in the uh, last episode, some people pointed out to me that um, it's corruption that's leading to my income getting steadily lower. And they're absolutely right. I forgot about this factor and that it's extremely heavy with the Romans. You can see here that this province alone is suffering from 54% corruption. So it takes an income of 1891 and turns it into 932. And this gets progressively worse as my Imperium rises all the way up to, I think it's like 95% corruption. It's something ridiculous. Um, and it's something, this is one of those things that I mentioned. So for the person who asked me if the game is dog crap, absolutely not. I actually thoroughly have enjoyed this campaign. This is one of those things that I would think needs to be tweaked. I have gone and looked at the, um, the workshop. There are um, uh, mods that supposedly address this. And uh, that's something to keep in mind as well, uh, that there's mods that potentially address it. So, anyway, and I probably will install one of those mods if I can find one that looks like it's going to work without screwing anything up. So at the, at the end of the last episode, I've basically um, accomplished most of the things I need to. Uh, some of you all wanted me to look through my provinces real quick. And some of you said that I'm actually, in the provinces that aren't providing enough food, I'm actually suffering a bit of a detriment when it comes to... Uh, uh, income there, and that's a good point. That's most likely true. Corruption taxes, buildings, so food minus 80. So food minus building upkeep. I don't know where that would factor in food. It's hurting public order. I don't see anything that's hurting my income from it, but someone said that there was uh, a penalty for it. That I can't tell. Let's let's just check it out. So, for instance, let's just keep this in mind. At uh, Ptolemaeus here, um, the provincial income in Libya is 716 when I'm at minus 14 food. Now, obviously, if I build another farm here, it's going to add to the food, but it should also technically add to the wealth. But let's see what kind of percentage difference it's, it does. So if I add the cattle herd, it should add an extra 200 wealth and then an additional 50 um, because of the fertility level. So 250 wealth is what it should add, and 50 food. Let's build that building, and in a couple of turns, come back and see what uh, the province looks like. Uh, otherwise, I'm pretty much near the end of the turn, and some of you have mentioned the best way for me to deal with um, the corruption is to have a governor, which I do have governors in as many provinces as I can. And I think I've given them the upgrades that help to take away some of the corruption. But the other thing I can do is build a tabernet, which I think comes from this chain here. It does. And I can train spies. And spies have the investigate corruption ability uh, eventually when you get them enough. Um, so that is what I'm going to do um, in Bithynia. And we'll start training out some spies from there. Like So for instance, I have this spy who I've been using against enemy agents. This army is probably going to die, unfortunately. But my thoughts are this, and I keep forgetting to turn my paint tools back on. I apologize. I want to go from this city, and I want to hit um, Iran right here. Uh, and the reason I want to do that is because I think that's their last settlement, and then I can basically subjugate them. Um, and then that ought to give me more income than if I conquered the province because of the corruption at this point, I think. And uh, I will focus on the same thing with Atropatene. If I hit Atropatene here at Duin, and then at Gonzaga, not the basketball school, by the way, um, and Ekpatana, when we get to their last settlement, again, we should be able to subjugate them, and I might be able to start taking client states away from the Sassanids, which income-wise will hurt them quite badly, as well as hurting them from a military support standpoint. So let's go ahead and end this turn.
Yeah, let's just see how I can do against the massive corruption. Clearly it's massive, and it's a big time pain, and I think it's too extreme. And honestly, I like the idea of the corruption being there, but I think that there should be a chain of buildings, or technology, or characteristics um, of, say, like a good emperor that would help to undo it. Um, so that there's some way for you to combat it, but it still affects you if you're not doing well, if that makes sense. I think that would be an interesting way uh, to make that work. And the Sassanids look like they're going to come up here, and if they are stupid enough to attack my fort... Oh my gosh. Right when you think these guys can't get any dumber, apparently they don't remember the pain and suffering that I taught them at the other fort. Um, so we are going to have to teach them once again, as I'm going to have... I think... Yeah, I've got, I've got uh, six heavy spearmen and six armored legionaries um, waiting to blockade them out of my fort. That is that is not going to be a pretty picture. Um, not at all for the Sassanids here. Uh, and I also have deployables too, uh, which can probably work against me as well as they're going to work for me because, hey, I'm the heir of Carthage and you know, you know how I am sometimes about checking the mini-map or remembering in general. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to turn off all my fire at will troops just so that I don't do any friendly damage. And let's get my general back here into the safety of the fort, into an attacking Testudo like the little wimp that he is because I need to keep him safe. Alright, and now let's, um, maybe this will be fun. Let's actually mix an armored Legio, Legio, uh, and one of my Lanciarii at each uh, entrance point. That way we've got a little bit of both. Because I've got six entrances to the fort. Speaking of which, uh, you all may have heard me while well, well, I'm just setting this up. I don't know if any of you are Xbox One owners. <laughs> if, if you are, then I apologize. You're probably, <laughs> you're probably in the same boat as me as far as frustration level with it. Uh, but the good news is, the good news... Um, the Master Chief Collection, which was such a point of frustration for me, um, has uh, actually been patched to the point where matchmaking works and has been actually a crazy ton of fun for me uh, because, man, I love classic Halo. Um, I, rem I, I was in college, uh, obviously, when Halo 3 came out, and I didn't own an Xbox. I did not have enough money. I was paying for my own school, and there was no way that I could afford uh, a luxury like an Xbox 360. Not to mention, with all the physics, calculus, and other engineering courses, my time for such foolishness was quite low, despite how bad that I uh, wanted such foolishness. <laughs> um, so, yes, anyway, it's fun for me to be able to play those things, and of course, man, I was beyond mad whenever they released it and the matchmaking wasn't working, because it's like, you know, it's one thing if you release a game that doesn't have good working multiplayer, but it's mostly a single player game, which I'm not advocating, that still ticks me off, because um, you shouldn't release it at all. <laughs> but uh, Halo is not like a, a single player focus. Yes, it does have an interesting single player campaign, but I mean, it is heavily a multiplayer focus. So it was wildly frustrating. Uh, and now it seems to be working pretty well. It still has a few things I think that could be better, but man, it's been fun to actually get some matches. Too bad it took six months past release for it to happen, but hey, uh, Air's one of those guys that uh, it's kind of like uh, Rome 2. We were all frustrated with the release, um, but man, better late than never. Let's let's fix it at least as much as possible. And some of you are going to say, well, Air Rome 2 is not completely fixed either. Well, I, I would agree with you. It still needs some patches as well. Um, definitely does, but like I said, it's, it, at least they did not leave it in the shape that it was when the game first came out. So let's let's go into uh, let's go into rump state cam here. What? Can I not focus on the uh, can I not focus on the enemy units? That's a bunch of horse plop. Oh, come on! Well, the graphics are pretty, though. <laughs> I kind of like the skies and stuff in Attila, though there are some things about the slightly happier color of Rome 2 that I, I liked a little better, but then, I don't know, sometimes I like the grittiness of uh, Attila. Kind of goes back and forth, and apparently I hit something that made it tab out of the game. So there we go. Look at the cow drops I call them beneath my men. Watch your eyes! Okay, so there's going to be men coming in from every direction. I'm going to fast forward, actually. 
Uh, the only thing I want to make sure of is that the AI doesn't like, because they're going to have some Savar and Cav and horse archers and other stuff. I just want to make sure they don't get up close to me and start shooting like my horse units or something else. So I'll probably move up to the uh, interior with all these units to try and stay away from the range of uh, enemies. Okay, all my cabs there. Uh, let's go into place. The enemy's getting close. My towers are going to be opening fire. Um, there's a new Persian Man of Bowmen, Persian Man of Bowmen. So none of those, t well, those javelins are a bit of a concern to me. But my missile block chance is so good in the Testudo that we should be all right. And they'll hopefully pepper their own uh, guys in the back with javelins. So they are just about in range, and their own guys will, will definitely take the brunt of that damage. So let's just leave that be. Uh, this is where the game froze up last time, probably because there's so many characters on the screen, and Attila does not run particularly smooth. Uh, that's one thing about this game that also needs a little love, is the optimization. And we've had this discussion before. Some people say that it's simply because the uh, the game was made for graphics cards that don't exist yet, but in, in my opinion, that just kind of sounds like an excuse for not having optimized the game. Whether or not I'm right or wrong doesn't matter. Whatever the case is, it just doesn't work quite as well as Rome 2 did. Uh, I know that they've added more textures and it's a little more graphically intensive, so I didn't expect it to be exactly the same, which is why I upgraded my computer. But to be honest, if you have an i7, uh, 4770K like I do, and a, and a GTX 970, there's no reason this game should not be able to run um, consistently at 60 frames a second. Uh, it just to me seems like you aren't using your resources well. And I've heard a lot of discussion too, and again, I'm not bashing on CA with this guys. I hope you know, I like CA. They invite me to events, they're very nice, they let me have copies of the game. I'm just saying this as a, as a critic of the game because I, not, a, not as a critic in the sense that I'm antagonistic, a critic in the sense of someone who loves the game. Um, so I wish they would take the time to develop a 64-bit engine too. Can you imagine having a Total War game with being able to use all of the cores in your processor and to take advantage of more than four gigs of video RAM if you wanted to. I mean, that would just be nice. And, and, and maybe I misunderstand this a little bit. It seems like that's it. I mean, if you're a programmer, you know, look at all the arrows and javelins stuck in. <laughs> that's pretty cool. If, if you know more about programming and you're like, Air, you're all kinds of stupid, here's why. That's fine. You can leave a comment. H help me understand. I, I, I understand that it probably is actually a lot of work uh, to churn out a 64-bit engine. But man, it would be nice to see that happen because it really needs to, to happen, I think, in order to take the games to their next level. Um, but one way or the other, man, I enjoy the heck out of Total War. And uh, I'm glad to see that a lot of the campaign things that bothered us in Rome 2 got addressed in Attila. I mean, you, you had a better political system. Um, you've got governors and stuff that are really cool, uh, and they get tied in with the edicts. It was just really neat, like a lot of the changes, and I was glad that they made it. Check out these guys trying to chuck javelins. Um, they're not actually doing it at the moment. I th these guys over on this side, though, are actually hurling, and you can see that they're probably tagging a lot more of their own men <laughs> like that. You can see them actually tagging their own guys here. Very, very pretty look. Let's see if anything's happening that shouldn't be. Um, none of my horsemen or general is under fire, so we're good. And there are assassinates coming from every direction. Let's see where we've lost the most men. This is one place where we seem to have lost... A fair number of men, but no no big worry here. Persian mounted warriors. So these Persian nobles are up in the fight. The Persian mounted bowmen are wasting all their ammo and getting mowed down. Uh, what's this unit here? Persian mounted warriors. I'm hoping that the different Persian nobles will come up here and, and get themselves killed. Uh, we've killed a, a lot of, of Sassanid uh, family members. There's another shipper. I think we've killed several shippers <laughs> the process of this. And this uh, Narse, yeah, Narse, however you say that, this guy is the uh, the main general for the Sassanids in this battle. Yeah, anyway, they've expended all their ammo over here, so they've, they've helped me a lot by shooting their own guys in the back. And then my towers are taking a severe toll as well. And with the combination of spears and swords at each entrance, it kind of adds some versatility for our guys. Obviously, it would be better to just have swords where their spears are, uh, but they're not going to make it that easy for me. And honestly, there's going to be a lot of fast-forwarding that's going to have to take place. Um, they've got Persian-mounted bowmen. Two of them there. I wanted to say there was a mercenary Savarin Cav somewhere on the field here, but perhaps not. I also thought that there was potentially Onagers. 
But I haven't seen any onagers either. One of the enemy generals uh, has died. So let's see this. Just look at the, the man count. Yeah, they've already lost um, 1,300 men. And I have only lost uh, a little over 100. So I would say that this is most certainly uh, working out in our favor. And as soon as I get the chance, like say when these guys break... I don't have caltrops here. Um, so I'll take my cavalry out from where these guys get broken and um, go do some work. In fact, let's get ready for just such a move so that we can rear charge these guys and uh, get rid of some of their infantry before it can affect any damage on my men. But I I'm not worried about any of my men routing, per se, uh, at the moment. Now, how are we actually losing this? Oh, there's a Persian noble cav that routed through my fort. That was weird. Okay, so we have a lot of troops. Um, let's take a look at the man count again. So yeah, almost 2,000 Sassanids down at this point. So they are taking losses very, very badly. And then these uh, Armenian spears won't last a whole lot longer. They're already wavering and they're under flaming arrow fire attacking an armored legio head-on. And that's where my breakout is going to be with my cav. So as soon as these guys bite it, my cav is going to break free. Yeah, and they are... Yep, there they go. So all my cav can now exit, and I'm going to immediately come over here and rear charge this big blob. And I'll just start moving around and trying to free up my infantry and chasing down routing Sassanids. Yep, they are down about 2,200 men at the moment. So I want to get my Persian mounted warriors all spread out here. Keep my, scout, uh, my scouts back just a little bit because they're a little weaker. I'm going to rear charge these uh, Persian nobles and other units here. They're already under the, the, the flaming arrow uh, problems there. I'd kind of like to cycle charge, but I'm a little worried to cycle charge. Man, my towers are shooting right into the midst of my own men. That's... It's like that's all they're hitting is my own men at this point. It's some excellent targeting. Let's just go for this Persian noble. Alright, the Persian noble routed. Let's go ahead and pull back from here. And uh, let's bring these light cab over to chase down the fleeing enemy cab. And then move our other units around. So my, light, my fast light cab should be able to still track down the uh, routing... Persian Noble. There we go. I thought I got a click on the uh, Persian Noble. There it is. Alright. Oh, those guys still have all their ammo. I don't want to get over here and give those mounted bowmen a chance to accomplish anything. See, my scouts are copping heavy fire from my own towers, which is frustrating. I'm actually just going to pull them out here and let the towers shoot a bunch of those guys because I'm I'm taking the losses here, <laughs> unfortunately. I want to chase down that Persian noble. Yeah, I really want to get over here and rear charge these guys, but don't think that's going to be best. Let's actually uh, take these infantry out. And we'll go do a rear infantry charge. Yeah, so there's more enemy infantry coming onto the field as some exits. Let's see if we can make it to those Persian nobles. Let's uh, rear charge these guys real quick, put them out of their misery. Let's get these guys and just re reposition a little. Same thing here. Oh, getting... There's apparently routing troops right here because my own towers continue to fire into me. And my guys can't go into Testudo. So that there must be troops routing through the midst of them, which is bad for me. We have caught that Persian noble. Our rear charge works. Let's get out of here too because, again, the towers are going to keep shooting my own men. And let's go finish off this, this blob here. I'm going to put my armored legio on to fire at will and just let them throw their javelins into that fray. Let's 
Let's go out here and run down these Armenian spears real quick. That Persian noble is almost gone, but not quite. There's another Persian noble. I'll uh, give chase to it momentarily. Let's actually get our guys back inside the fort, cavalry-wise. No sense, and we need to keep them in case maybe there's a ton of infamy, uh, enemy skirmishers left when it's all said and done. So let's just lure these mercenary Persian scouts back in. I am within javelin range of these mercenary Persian scouts. Or no, maybe they have a bow. I can't remember. Okay, this fight over here has been broken up. And let's just come back and get ready to cover our positions. Okay, we're going to have to come around. Uh, are there caltrops there? There are. I'm going to have to just bring this unit around. It is a scout unit, but theirs is also a scout, and it's probably fresher than my men. You know what we can do? Let's take these guys out of Testudo, fire at will. They'll uh, javelin those Persian scouts on the way past. <laughs> Got lured right into my trap. That was brilliant. Go ahead and come on past. We got caltrops. Yes, there's caltrops there, so I'm gonna have to really swing all the way around. This fight over here uh, has just had to be an infantry grind out, and it's fine. It's worked in my favor. I see some uh, juicy routing targets over here. I'll just go ch give chase to them, just because I can. They've got a Svarn cataphract coming on over here, as well as some mercenary lockman scouts, Persian mounted warriors, legionary defectors. So apparently some disgruntled Romans coming to fight against the real Romans. Alright, so this will give this cavalry a chance to rest. And then we'll just use these guys to uh, to kill a fair number of routing troops. The Sassanid, holy crap, the Sassanids have lost a lot of men. I don't know if that's actual kills or if that's just um, routing, like if it counts a routed unit as gone, so I have no idea. It probably counts routing units uh, as no longer in that man count. But there's even more troops coming out of the field because they had well more than 40 units. We're gonna get a lot of kills on this mercenary Persian scout. A lot of kills. No doubt about it. Look at these hurlers going point blank into my Lanciarii Senores. They're not gonna get many kills. Those are Armenian slingers. Wow, look at these guys. They're just hurling them one right after another. And those guys can put down a pretty fantastic beating. And even they are completely useless um, against the Testudo. The Testudo is very effective versus missiles. There's the mercenary Svar and Cav that I feared. Let's run away from it to chase these units. Because I definitely don't want to get anywhere near those guys. Those guys are uh, horse murderers extraordinaire. Look at this, just already wavering the mercenary uh, def uh, defector, legionary defectors. I would pull my infantry around to uh, rear charge these guys, but um, coming out here in the open with those Svarn cataphracts may be a bit dangerous. And also, especially, the mercenary Svarn cav, yeah, it routed. At least I'm pretty sure it did. Yeah, a lot of enemy units are just giving up and routing now. Up to 170 kills here. Let's go get us another unit. And uh, when these troops up here in front of me route and get out of the range of my towers, I'll just come after them as well. The, yeah, these guys are going to route very quickly. They're coming into a situation where it's going to see their numbers drop very, very quickly. There's a lot of enemies there, but it won't matter. I'll bring even more infantry reinforcements over as necessary. Nope, there's the mounted bowmen. I thought these guys had all routed. Maybe they were just out of line of sight. Yeah, and the Svarn cap's still there. Yeah, they were just out of line of sight. 229 kills. Let's go after another one. 
we're going to need to hurry up and get these guys up here in Testudo so that these, uh, especially the Svar and Cav, but the more they shoot their own infantry in the back, just the better it's going to be for me here. Yeah, this is bad. we got to get into there fast because those are Svar and Cav are going to really be pushing on me there. Let's go get a close-up of the carnage. Here's my guys in Testudo looking very awesome. The pile of Sassanids. Um, fighting kind of like the, uh, <laughs> kind of like the uh, Persians at the hot gates here, except Romans instead of Spartans and a fort instead of an actual mountain. But hey, whatever, it works. Same idea, right? So, <laughs> just see the action here up close. That's that is very nice looking. I'll say that for Attila. I know a lot of you aren't as impressed by graphics upgrades, but I mean, they are nice. They don't make a game, but they're nice. And here you're seeing uh, even more troops coming in here. Is that a Persian noble? I can't tell. Let's take a look at some of these cab out here. There's all the Persian mounted bowmen. And the mercenary Savarans. These guys right here, you can see them holding their crossbows. They don't even look like they're firing. But they're, uh, their horse, horse archers are doing a great job of helping to finish off their own men. And even if they were to beat through one of my infantry units, which I don't think they will, uh, they will end up uh, in trouble. That legionary defector actually is going to be doing okay-ish here. I'm going to actually pull this armored legio out of Testudo and uh, get into this fight. I don't like having it out of Testudo because of all the, the archer fire, but it'll help get rid of these uh, desert legionary defectors who will actually do fairly well versus the spear unit over time. And I'll keep an eye on their numbers here. You can see we are losing men to the missile fire. Faster than I would like. But um, let's see, there's a mercenary onager too. And that will be an excellent target. I'm going to spread out in loose formation, just go for the mercenary onager. Yeah, we need to kill that, that legionary defector. Uh, let's bring our. Bowmen over to fire at their uh, Svarn Cav. Switch over to Heavy Shot, because the Svarns have a bit of uh, armor. My Persian scout's gonna go hunt down that um, Onager. Let's get our Sagittari up here. Okay, enemy units routing on mass. And let's uh, let's watch our. <laughs> These Cav are like, no thanks. <laughs> There they go. They're not even routing. They're just exiting the range of my archers. The enemy are losing their advantage. Let's uh, switch back to standard shot so we can keep our range. Only a few enemy units left. I'm going to get these armored legio back here where I can get them into Testudo. Because right now they're at extreme risk from the javelins and the other units. But I've opened fire on the javelins. There we go. They are now in defense of Testudo. The enemy skirmishers are gone. Okay, all the enemy units are gone. So, what was the final count? <laughs> 6,840 Sassanids unable to uh, get rid of more than 600 Roman. Oh, a little more than 600 Romans. So, I would say that that was successful for the Romans. Let's, uh, let's get in here and uh, watch my mercenary Persian scouts betraying their own countrymen. Yeah, it looks like the Persian scouts actually carry a bow and they just have a couple of shots. <laughs> Good job, my mercenaries. Way to betray your countrymen. They weren't worth fighting for anyway. I wonder... I'm probably too tired to catch this Svarn Cav. What is my speed equivalent to? Actually, I've got a huge speed because these guys are upgraded. We might be able to catch that mercenary Svarn Cav just because of the speed differential. Uh, I want to try it. Oh, and I've got rapid advance, too. It's just gonna make my guys even more tired. But they're already quite tired. Let's see if we can actually catch these guys. Do I have Caltrops anywhere over here? I don't think I do. Where's my other scout unit? Because it's fast. Let's go ahead and get out here. I might actually catch these Mercenary Savarin Cav. I'm gonna let my guys fire their bows.
Yeah, we're gonna catch these mercenary Savarin Kev. I'll kill as many of them as I can. Wow, my scouts are fast. <laughs> Very fast, even considering they're exhausted, so they've they've got a lot of speed because of those upgrades, so that's that's an upgrade that's well worth it. Let's turn these guys' shots on as well. Might as well let them spin their ammo. Uh, we won't kill all of these mercenaries of Iron Cab, I think, just because of the way the killing mechanics are working here. They look to be taking the guys kind of one at a time. But we've, we've killed a, a fair number of them, so that if we have to fight them again, at least they'll be fewer in numbers and less capable. And that, that one unit of uh, scouts here has gotten 366 kills. Very nice. Let's see how my Armored Legio did real quick. Pretty good kills on on them. Lancey Arii Senior is holding their own too. Like I said, those guys aren't bad. Uh, they're better than the, uh, the Armenian Spears that they're facing up against. Yeah, that Mercenary Svarin Cav is considerably slower than my Scout Cav. It's just the death animations that's making it hard for me to actually wipe these guys out quickly. But we're going to get to kill a pretty decent number of these guys. Looks like about half their unit, maybe more. So, very good, very good. So, a big victory here. Let's, uh... Might as well just go ahead and fast forward and run down these last couple of units. I'm going to actually stay after those Svarn Cav until they got off the map, so that's good. Okay, let's just fast forward here and run down these last couple of units. Might as well since we've spent so much time running down units. Got rapid advance them so they can get there faster. Rapid advance, of course, adds a lot of speed. It's pretty handy. Gonna get those legionary defectors. We can't let them get away alive after betraying the emperor like that. All right, so we're gonna end the battle. So a huge victory for us. Uh, they lost, so that, yeah, it does count routing men on that band count. It makes it look like they're dead. But So they out of 6,840 men, they lost 4,571. Uh, they lost 60, 600 and some odd troops. So that was a huge victory for me there. The Sassanids making an utter foolishness of a mistake. Um, they did manage to keep two of their four family members, uh, but the rest of them were killed in action. And I am going to go ahead and replenish my troops with them at this point, just to try and make the replenishment speed faster um, so that my armies are capable of besetting the Sassanids quickly. And we will go mop up those crap stacks there on this next turn so that they don't go off and start roaming and raiding and a lot of their kind of stuff. So we will definitely take care of the Sassanids. Assassin is a reeling from losses, but we're going to need to keep pressure on them um, because otherwise they get a ton of money from their client states. And as you can imagine, Armenian spears don't come with expensive upkeep or anything else. So they're able to maintain a lot of stacks of cheap units. And to be honest, you all saw me play in the Assassin campaign. Even their cheap units are quite capable. Uh, a few Persian cataphracts or Savarin cataphracts can really wreck um, because you all know how, how shot cavalry can be in this game. Um, it is quite, quite powerful. So definitely something to keep in mind. Okay, those guys are going to run back into the desert, so we've managed to scare them off. They're going to bring their spy, or their priest, whatever they are, up here to, to play games with me, the Afrigids are. And the nice thing is, if I can get the Sassanids beat down to their last province... All of their puppet states will become mine if I subjugate them. So that's my goal, is I want to push the Sassanids to subjugation. It looks like the Macron is going to come down and beset. Um, I don't know if we can win this or not. Those Sogdian warriors and Dalamites are decent troops. But, I mean, that's two armored Legio. I think I'm going to have to save this one because I'm out of time. And we will take this on the next one. And try and beat this uh, Macron army, and even if we fail, which I don't think we will. I actually think we can hold this at the town center if it's defensible. And uh, we can either make them take enormous losses or we can hold them off altogether. Air of Carthage signing off for now, and I will see you then.